and then maybe whatever that is, a Klingon vest? I'm not really sure. I can probably get one more thing, one more thing. Nana, Nana, I'm sorry, I couldn't get you. It was a miss. Destruction delayed. Ooh. What's up guys, and welcome to 60 Parsecs, a game that I have been looking forward to for ages now. Like you guys know I did multiple playthroughs of 60 Seconds on the channel, and everybody loved that series, and I had a blast with it, and now we have its spiritual successor, I guess you could call it. I don't think this is a direct sequel, but it's made by the same people. It's 60 Seconds in Space, okay? It sounds amazing. I haven't played it yet, I don't know if anybody has because it hasn't been released yet, but the developers were nice enough to send me a copy of the game early, so today I get to share it with you guys. Pick an Astro Citizen Cadet. So we can choose between Dee Dee or Emmett. I think I wanna go with Dee Dee. She looks like she knows how to deal with stress through a whole lot of experience, and things are about to get stressful. Space drill, alert, nuclear apocalypse imminent. Executing order 1961, new protocol initiated. Commence Astro Citizen emergency drill and brace for nuclear impact. Like I said, kinda stressful. All that's important right now in a survival situation where we don't have a lot of time is that we need to remember not to panic. Okay, we need to stay calm. We're gonna keep our wits about us. You got this, DD. Welcome to Icarus 13 Space Station, Astro Citizen. Move, Astro Citizen. We don't have much time. I'm already panicking. <laughs> Grab some soup. You need rations to survive. Oh, yeah. They carried over the soup from 60 seconds. We have space soup. Drop it into the escape shuttle. Okay, would you mind directing me to the space shuttle? There we go, easy enough. Follow the giant glowing floor arrows. Find some medical supplies. Dee Dee, what did I tell you about panicking? Okay, you shouldn't be biting your nails through your spacesuit. I'm noticing the lack of dramatic music or panic. I don't have a timer, but I do have 60 parsecs however long a parsec is. I've also found the medical supplies. So I have medical supplies, I have soup, I have my wits about me. I don't have a paper bag for you to breathe in, but I'm sorry, I need to leave you behind. I need to find medical supplies. Find the handbook. Okay, I should be able to find the handbook easy enough. I need a handbook. I can't help you with your foot right now, sir. I'm starting to think I might be the only competent Astro Citizen here, okay? They are panicking, they're not keeping their wits about them. Hey, there we go. I got myself a handbook. Oh, God, Emmett. This is why I didn't choose to play as you. If I played it as him when I've been tied up... Oh, no, okay, I'm sorry, I have to abandon you. I need to get this handbook to safety first. There we go. Find some crafting resources. Crafting resources, have we seen that? Nana, you're big into arts and crafts, right? Have you seen any crafting supplies? Do you remember what I told you about how cell phones work? <laughs> Even in space, nobody can hear Nana scream. Okay, this is, ho oh, here we go. I walked right past it. Crafting supplies, put them in the escape shuttle. Am I just saving myself right now? No, find a crewmate. So, of all the ignoramuses that I have seen so far, who do I want to rescue? I think I want to get Emmett, right? He's just kind of tangled up. He doesn't seem that stupid. Can I? There we go. Okay, you're just gonna go in Dee Dee's pockets and you're safe. Alert! It's a very quiet alert. Incoming missile detected. High risk of impact. Grab whatever and whoever you can and head for the escape shuttle. There's my timer. There's my 60 parsecs. Okay, let's start off by grabbing soup. Okay, we're not gonna panic. We're gonna keep our wits about us. We know exactly where everything is. That's different. Did they change everything around? How did everything move in the- No, you weren't in here! Oh no, this this is bad. This is bad. This is the feeling of panic setting in. We got 30 parsecs left. Oh crap. Okay, I gotta save somebody, right? I'm gonna save you and um, what is this? That's a lovely dress. No, I can't take that. I can't take that. I definitely can't take bucket foot. I guess we gotta go back for them. That all looked like important stuff. I'm not seeing water, which is strange. Right, usually you would have to get soup and water. I guess we're just gonna subside entirely off of soup. That, that, that's, that's fine by me. We got you, and then maybe whatever that is, a Klingon vest? I'm not really sure. I can probably get one more thing. One more thing. Nana, Nana, I'm sorry, I couldn't get you. It was a miss. Destruction delayed. Ooh. 
Ooh, okay. Escape shuttle not sealed within 60 seconds. Supplies discarded. Alert. Oh, not again. What? So we have a brand new 60 parsecs, and this time we actually know where everything is, right? Nothing has changed. We can do that again. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say we're not gonna be so lucky to have this one be a drill or a near miss or whatever just happened. <laughs> but now I am prepared. I am cool. I am calm. I am collected. And I don't have enough space in this shuttle for everybody, do I? If I grab Bucket Foot here, and I take him with the Klingon vest, I don't have any room for Nana. Okay, you know what? It's fine. Nana would have been completely useless. <laughs> What's she gonna do? Make us bread? I don't think she's gonna be able to really survive in space all that well. We're doing a lot better this time. We're moving on to rooms that I hadn't really gotten to. Let me through, door. Not now. We're gonna take a mask. We're gonna take uh, a battery. Okay, uh, a few seconds left. I wouldn't mind getting all the soup that's up here. Oh, d oh, I, or not. I'm just gonna backflip into it. <laughs> Oh, sorry, Nana. I feel like that went about as well as we could have hoped for. <laughs> Hello there, gentlemen. How are we doing? So we have Baby Bronco, Tom Thompson, Emmett Ellis, as well as D.D. Dawkins. We have a whole bunch of soup. Seven. Oh, this was a spacesuit. Looks like a padded... Best spacesuit, navigation system level one, spacesuit level one, status unavailable. As well as a whole bunch more junk. Hello there, Astro, computerized assistant reporting for duty. You must be Dee Dee, right? I'm pleased to announce that you have been randomly selected to become the captain of this vessel. Welcome aboard the escape shuttle, Captain. On behalf of the Astro Citizen program, please accept our apologies for the minuscule inconvenience of being hurdled 60 parsecs away from Earth. That's what I was going to say. I thought a parsec was a measurement of distance, not time. Maybe I'm wrong, I, I just, I, I didn't want to say anything because you sound like a loser. <laughs> Your mission, find a safe place to land on and then try to contact the outside world. Please activate the main computer for further assistance. It is located in the center of the shuttle. Follow the regular rationing protocol and feed your crew. Show me what you got, Captain. So that's our report, but we also have goals, crew, and statistics. So our current goals, a captain's goal is to make seven successful attribute decisions of any type whatever that means, and then our current goal is to find an appropriate landing spot. Oh, and we even get to learn a little bit about our crew. D.D. Dawkins, agility, limber, intelligence, average, strength, average. A former child athlete whose promising career was ended by an untimely injury. As an adult, she struggles to reinvent herself, but the reality is far from what she imagined. She joins the Astro Citizen program in hopes of regaining the confidence and finally becoming the champion she was always destined to be. Captain's goal, make seven successful attribute decisions of any type, prove yourself, and achieve greatness. Caffeinated. Hunger bonus. You don't need food after all that coffee. Oh, okay. So if we were Emmett, we would have probably had different goals and then probably a different stat bonus as well. That's pretty cool. We have Baby Bronco, agility average, intelligence dumb, strength mighty. Baby is an adult man, but a very simple-minded one. From a young age, his biggest asset was his extraordinary physical strength and build. Due to this, Baby is manipulated by his small-time crook parents and becomes a criminal himself. The Astro Citizen program is quite literally his escape and a second chance. Emmett Ellis, agility, flexible, intelligence, brilliant, strength, wimpy. Despite his brilliant mind, Emmett has always been undervalued and misunderstood by his peers. Seeking scientific challenge and to get away from his ungrateful job as a chemistry teacher, he signs up for the Astro Citizen program, hoping this could be the place where he can finally earn the appreciation and respect he deserves. Really? Really, he's a genius? Are you sure about that? And last, but certainly not least, we have the dollar store version of Zap Brannigan in Tom Thompson. Agility, average, intelligence, clever, strength, fit. Everyone's first impression of Tom Thompson is that of a decorated major, brave and courageous. A man who has seen it all, sporting a dastardly eye patch and a coat of once magnificent blonde hair, Tom believes to be everyone's dream come true and the personification of the American hero. Except none of this is true. Some of this is written a little strangely, so it can be difficult to read, but we also have a ton of stats. 
All of them being hard zeros at the moment, I want to say. Yeah, we're not going to get anything through that. Okay, well, you know what? I feel like we're off to something good here. Captain, since you've just taken command, the protocol dictates a speech must be given. A good one. Scratch that. A great one. Everyone is really looking forward to your speech, Captain. So am I. This is it. You can really show what breed of captain will you be on this incredible journey. What kind of a speech will you give? So we can give an agility speech, an intelligence speech, or a strength speech. And for some reason, agility has three ticks on it, whereas intelligence only has one and strength only has one. So I'm not sure what that means. Oh, I'm willing to bet it has to do with the crew that we've chosen, right? Because Baby isn't very agile, the rest of them are, hence three in agility. The only one who's smart is Emmett, and the only one who's strong is Baby. So I guess we should probably be an agility captain. It plays to the strong suits of our crew. How'd you guys like that speech? That's what I thought. Everything seems to be under control. I think we will now pull the lever. We have, oh, rationing details. That's interesting. So now, instead of soup, water, and medication, we have soup, sock puppet, and animation. That sock puppet is Ted's. I have that in the banner for my channel. We didn't grab it. I didn't even see it. Did I? I don't even remember. Okay, either way, we can give people soup or medication. I don't want to do any of that right now. It's only day one. You guys can toughen up, right? We're just going to end the day. Move on to day two. I'm just gonna say it right now, I'm probably not gonna get a full playthrough considering this is an introduction to the game. So uh, this might be a, a two-parter for the first time, but I'll get it down, Pat. Never before has anyone given a speech so determined and to the point. Not any space captain, at least. You spoke of making your own luck and surviving. It really sounded like you knew what you were talking about. Did you? That was a great performance, Captain. Your crew started cheering even before you were finished with the speech. Long live the captain, filled the cabin. If any sound could travel through the soundless void outside the hull of your ship, it would probably be Nana yelling on her corded phone. <laughs> or, you know, th th that would be it. It'd be the speech. One thing is for sure. You are ready for any challenge this galaxy throws at you. Baby says he is glad to have you as his captain. Emmett says he is glad to have you as his captain. Tom? Tom, you got anything to add? Would you, uh, would you like to pipe up? No? Rat bastard? Oh, this is really useful. So with 60 seconds, you were always guessing about people's sanity and their hunger and their thirst and stuff like that. Now I can just click on a crew member. Hunger, okay. Health, okay. Sanity, okay. Morale, okay. So if they're going crazy, I need to give them a sock puppet. How that works, I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> but everything looks good for you. Morale loyal, oh, interesting, okay, we're doing good, so if I lose morale, is there going to be a mutiny? I need to keep an eye out on Tom. Captain, it's important to keep yourself and your crew well fed. One portion of delicious canned soup is enough to sustain a human for a few days. Even one can could be the difference between life and death. That's why it's important to keep good inventory of your stock. Unless you want to eat your own crewmates. Ha ha, that was a joke. Baby's the biggest. He looks delicious. <laughs> Please appreciate it and laugh. Look, we're bonding already. This is bonding. So technically I have like five crew members because the robot assistant seems to have a whole lot going on upstairs. Who will perform the routine supply check? The only requirement is simple mathematics. I realize I might be asking a lot, but I have good faith about this crew, Captain. So simple mathematics, we're not gonna get Baby to do it. That's probably too simple for Emmett. I think we'll get Tom to do it. I'm gonna trust him. He doesn't like me as captain, but I'm gonna lock that in. I really like this so far. This is very different. So I, I still feel like I don't need to feed people. Maybe we'll test the waters and see how long we can go. Four-ish days, probably. I think that's probably a safe bet. Dawn of day three. How are we doing? Everybody's looking fine. And we have a new readout. Good news, Captain. This shuttle came pre-stocked with an emergency food supply. Use it well, plus two cans. Free space soup. Uh, the routine supply check is now complete and does not compute. An error was made. That's what I get for trusting humans to do math. Minus one soup. Oh, so we didn't really have as much as we thought we had. Nobody's stealing. Right? Keep an eye on Tom. I don't trust him. Some of the supplies went missing, and the current number of soup cans on board is eight. 
The food you collected is more than sufficient for now. Just don't eat it all at once. Interesting. So, are you... Hmm. He is not hungry, but nobody is hungry. I'm wondering if he ate some soup behind our back. He does seem to have a soup can top as a metal, but I think that's because he's crazy. Kiepton, the crafting module in the back of the cabin is now available. It's pretty self-explanatory. This wonderful machine lets you create and destroy in accordance with the principle of mass conservation. All you need is a little bit of minerals, chemicals, or power. Use it to craft, recycle, and repair your supplies, as well as upgrade items and shuttle systems. Interesting. Okay. So... Their hunger is still okay. I, I don't think I need to feed them yet, but I am interested in making stuff because we got a whole lot of resources off the ship. So we can recycle a bunch of our stuff, we can upgrade a bunch of our stuff, we can craft things. We can craft a lighter or soup. Uh, I don't know what this is telling me. 10 out of, oh, I have uh, an inventory up here. We have 80 chemical, 80 mineral, and 40 power. So I can use 10 chemical to make a can of soup, 10 mineral to make a lighter. Interesting. Can I upgrade stuff? Crafting module upgrade could use 25 power. We can make armor, an artifact. Oh, I can make items that I didn't get off the ship. That is really clever. I really like what they've done to change this game. They've made it a, a lot more complex, but at the same time, more forgiving. So if you have a bad run, you don't need to restart. You just kind of power on through it. I think I have all of this, right? We have a battery. We have a gun. We have a handbook. We have a mask. We have a shovel. We have tape. We have armor and an artifact. Hmm. Yeah, I think, I think we have everything. I'm not sure if you can only do a limited number of upgrades per day, so I don't want to waste this day. How about we upgrade our crafting module? That seems important, right? Did it do it? No, it takes time. Yeah, we need to wait until tomorrow, so I can probably only do one crafting thing per day. So it's for the best that I do that, and now we're going to wait. Do I want to feed you guys for tomorrow? Tomorrow's day four. I think we're going to push it to day five. You're all strapping young lads. I'm sure you'll be perfectly fine. I'm caffeinated. No worries there. Day four. We all looking good still? Captain, I told you I turned on the crafting system in the back of the shuttle. Did you forget about it? No. Didn't I tell it to upgrade itself? Days remaining one. Oh, it takes a certain amount of time. Well, what are you yelling at me for, robots? Their hunger is still just okay. Until they tell me they're hungry, I'm not going to waste food on them, even though I have a whole lot of food. Maybe I'll make a decision first. I'm disturbed, Captain. You've reported hearing a child crying somewhere in the shuttle, but my sensors don't show anyone unaccounted for on board. Certainly no stowaway children. This may be an auditory hallucination caused by the stress of witnessing a nuclear war. The other possibility is my sensors are malfunctioning, and there really is a stowaway. Search the shuttle? It's probably worth searching the shuttle, right? We might find supplies or a ghost. I'm gonna, I, I think there's no reason not to. Yeah, we're gonna search the shuttle and then I think I'm gonna feed everybody. You know what? You guys are all doing good work. You each take an entire can? That can't be right. I have eight cans of soup and if I give one to them, I lose an entire can of soup. So, in reality, I have far less food than 60 seconds because one can of soup used to be split among three people. So maybe we're not gonna spend our food right now. We're gonna hold on to it. I think we are, oh, that's cool. A little crafting thing is down here. I think we're good. Hopefully they don't starve. If they get a little hungry, that's fine. Please don't starve. This is weird. Did we, did we find a child? Day five. Not seeing any children, that's good. You and the crew tried to find the source of the mysterious child's cries, even though the others couldn't hear it. Could have told me that before, but after sifting through every crate and searching every dark corner, you didn't find anyone else. It was a stress-related auditory hallucination. I'm not surprised. When the nuke started flying down on Earth and the space station exploded, your crew barely escaped with your lives. Billions of others weren't so lucky. Emmett is still loyal. Upgrade complete, crafting module level two. You should eat something, Captain. Baby is hungry, Emmett is hungry, Tom is hungry. Okay, so everybody's hungry now. So we can go five days without getting hungry. Might be able to go like seven or eight without dying, but I'll, I'll feed everybody. That's fine. 
Um, any other interesting things that I can craft now that this is upgraded? Oh, we can make a sock puppet. We should make a sock puppet. Absolutely. We're going to use some minerals to make a sock puppet just in case somebody goes crazy. Very important. And other than that, I think everything is under control. Let's see what we got going here. Captain, one of our non-critical subsystems is having a meltdown. The malfunction is serious and the systems won't talk to me. It has to be dealt with directly. If we don't do anything, the breakdown will spill a brain cell atrophy inducing coolant into our ventilation system. That, that's not good. You, you don't want that. In other words, you'd better improvise a solution to this crisis. So just to be clear, brain cell atrophy inducing won't kill us. It'll probably just make us really, really dumb. I don't want to be really, really dumb. I don't want everybody to turn into baby. So we can use the artifact. We can use the communicator. We can use the first aid kit or we can use nothing. Well, doing nothing is out of the question, and I don't really like the idea of using the med kit. I kind of want to hold on to that for when somebody gets sick, because it's going to happen. Okay, somebody is going to get sick at some point. Somebody's going to get space syphilis, and we're going to have to cure it. It's unavoidable. So I want to hold on to that. The phone we could use. He did say that the system won't talk to him, and you talk over a phone. I don't know if all of these would actually fix it, or if, like, one is right, two are wrong. I'm kind of curious what exactly the artifact would do. Maybe we should try the artifact. <laughs> Seems like a really bad idea, but eh. Well, we'll give it a try, and uh, you guys aren't hungry or anything? Oh, you are hungry, but I already have food allocated to you. Okay, we're good. Who's ready to get dumbed down? Listen for any brain melting gas. Anything? No? Day six. We look fine. You put your faith in the artifact as the subsystem was melting. Imagine my surprise when the coolant spilled but stopped on the bubble of protective energy the item produced. Say what? I filtered the spillage out of the shuttle. We're in the clear and lucky for you, brain cell atrophy would just be the worst right now. Way to go, cow artifact, and it's still good. So we can use it again later. I really shouldn't have put, I didn't know that it was gonna make some kind of force field. I thought I would just use it to like plug a pipe or something like that. You guys good now? You're still hungry. How, how are you still hungry? I just, I just fed you. I just gave you a bunch of foods. Oh, that's not good. We still have a full day left on the sock puppet, so I can't craft anything for you guys. Uh, well, this night just got interesting. A nightmare wakes you up. As you adjust your eyes to the darkness, you suddenly realize that you are not alone. You can make out a silhouette of a person in the shadows. It's motionless, but seems to be staring right at you. You can't just ignore it, Captain. What do you do? Do we light it on fire, or do we ignore it? It, it's clearly one of these three idiots, and considering I'm the only girl on the ship, I can only imagine what they're doing. But yeah, you know what? Let's shame them with the lighter. If I have the lighter, I might as well... Use, I don't have a lighter. I don't have a lighter. I could have made a lighter. I'm too busy building a sock puppet, so we need to ignore it. Gross. <laughs> and I guess I'm wasting the rest of my food on you guys, because everybody's hungry. Oh, this is not going well. How did this go downhill so quickly? Day seven. I've been in here for a week. People keep jerking off. It's really weird. You woke up last night and saw what seemed to be a person standing in the shadows and staring at you. It took hours before you gathered the courage to approach it. Once you eventually did, it turned out that the mysterious visitor was, in fact, just an old useless mask hanging from a coat rack. <laughs> you were all so terrified. Oh, it was all of us together. I see. It was rather funny, I have to admit. Unfortunately, the experience left its mark on everyone's mental well-being. Hang in there, brave Astro citizens. Ha ha ha. Sorry. Hang in there. Why do I get the feeling if they go crazy, they're going to hang themselves in there? Baby remains loyal. Emmett is still loyal. Crafting complete. We now have the sock puppet just in time, and you are no longer hungry. I'm no longer hungry. Everybody else is still hungry. We're out of food. Sorry, guys. Uh, sanity is okay, though. So we took a tick to sanity, but we're still good. I need to craft food. Right? I don't really have a choice here. We're gonna have to craft more food and then see what else is waiting for us in the darkness. Interesting news, Captain. It appears that there is a hollow space behind one of the wall panels. A hidden room, maybe? A secret stash? It will be worth checking out. What's your approach to finding out what's behind the panel? I guess agility, right? Because I have three ticks in it. 
Sure, I'm an agility captain, so we're gonna do agility things, and um, I'm not giving you suckers more food because I don't have any. Hopefully it's an entire secret room full of food. That, that would be great. Yesterday you reached a hidden space behind one of the wall panels. The only way to get there was through the ventilation shaft, but thankfully you were nimble enough to fit in and exit through the other side. Unfortunately, you found nothing. The area was small and completely empty. Didn't seem to phase you much. I suppose you were used to disappointment by now. Everybody's loyal. We finished making our soup. So soup only takes one day to make. That is good to know. So we're going to keep making soup since you guys are real hungry buggers and I guess that's it. I like the patchy beards that are coming through. How are you guys doing? Everything else is still fine. I don't feel like this is going well at all. Your attention is required, Captain. This is most abnormal. We are registering unknown transmissions, but I cannot identify who is sending them, and more importantly, what they contain. It might be a solar flare interference, or worse, a new type of Soviet encryption. We need to decipher these signals as soon as possible. For all we know, our survival depends on it. Who do you want to put in charge of monitoring these communications? Clearly Emmett. <laughs> Easy call there. Hopefully it's a rescue party or something like that. That would be wonderful. I don't really have any food to give. We are crafting soup. We're gonna end the day. Are those communications coming along, Emmett? Good, maybe? Oh, first contact, interesting. Captain, you need to see this. I'm not easily excited, but this is one of the greatest moments for humanity and human-made AI alike. We are not alone in this universe. The signals we intercepted were finally decrypted. They are alien transmissions, as in coming from another life forms. <laughs> okay, I was kind of hoping for rescue, but I guess meeting somebody else will, will do for now. And no, I do not mean the raids. It's something we have never seen before. There seems to be a number of intelligent civilizations in this galaxy. The signals are coming from everywhere. We can safely assume we are going to meet some of them sooner or later. Our, or rather your life will never be the same, Captain. Crafting complete new items, we got soup. Tom reported being glad to have you as his captain. Finally, I have won Tom over. You're loyal to me now? That's freaking right you are. If only I had soup for you idiots. I'm gonna keep making more, I suppose. Just wasting all my resources. I'll get four cans of soup and then spread them around evenly. How about that? Well, that's unexpected. Captain, there's cheese in the pantry. At least, I think it's cheese. I don't know how it got there. Did somebody sneak it on board? Is there an infestation of alien mold? Was it the French? <laughs> desperate times call for desperate measures, Captain. We don't know the origin of the mystery cheese. Will you eat it anyway? I'm just gonna say right now, this is an awful idea. You shouldn't eat mystery cheese, but I don't have all that much soup and uh, I'm kind of curious, so we're gonna experiment a little bit. We're gonna eat the mystery cheese. <laughs> <laughs> and skaboosh. Was that a mistake? We'll find out soon. That's why I was biting my nails through my suit. I wanted to make holes for all the diarrhea to flow through. You decided to eat the strange cheese you found in the pantry. Unfortunately, the cheese wasn't cheese at all. It was an incredible soap product. Oops. You and the crew are even hungrier than you were before. Damn it, you need to be more careful what you put in your mouth, Captain. Emmett remains loyal, crafting complete. You're starving. Baby is starving, Emmett is starving, Tom is starving. God damn, okay. Well, I guess I need to give food to everybody but me, right? The Captain will suck it up for now and uh, I'm gonna make a new soup. So that's my meal for tomorrow. And see what we've got in store for us, Captain. It is time for an Astro Citizen's activity of utmost importance, the most essential task available on this shuttle, cleaning the cabin floor. <laughs> From specks of melted tar to a fine coating of skin dust, the place could use a good scrubbing. Emmett looks free. Will you ask him to apply some elbow grease or request he improvises a cleaning formula from whatever we have on board? I mean, Emmett's really smart. Hopefully don't waste anything on board because we really need all of our stuff. But uh, yeah, we, we can improvise. Hopefully I don't die of starvation. That'd be real disappointing. There's no way he's only one day of starving, right? You should be able to go multiple days of starving. Maybe, possibly. Okay, I'm alive. That's all that matters. Emmett brewed some kind of concoction that would do the cleaning trick, and the trick it did. To boot, the scent of the improvised cleaning product was surprisingly citric. You all have a clearer head in his newly cleaned space. 
Everybody is still loyal. Baby is no longer starving. Baby is hungry. Emmett is no longer starving. Emmett is hungry. Tom is no longer starving. Tom is hungry. Okay, then. So, I need to give myself food. Where did we get another can of soup? Weird. Okay. I don't know where that came from, but I'll take it. We're going to keep making more soup. Really don't have any choice there. And then we're going to see what's up. Captain, I've got good news and I've got bad news. The good news is that using the airlock as a space toilet was successful. It's now packed full and ready to be emptied into space. The bad news is the airlock hatch is jammed. Ooh, yeah, we got a constipated airlock. If you don't fix it soon, our clogged toilets will quickly become an extinction level event. It's now or never, Captain. Will you save the human race? Oh, you know what? Let's just duct tape it. I think that's probably gonna do it, right? Maybe, possibly. That doesn't seem like a good idea. How exactly we're gonna use duct tape to unstick something? I'm not entirely sure. The duct tape saved the day, Captain. The airlock hatch is now fully operational and the troublesome cargo is gone. We are safe. I'm certain the smell will go away too. Someday, your people are safe, Captain. What a relief for all of you. And everybody is still alert and doing well and yada, yada, yada. Okay, well, that's good, I think. Oh, that is good. The green stage of sanity is alertfulness. Okay, so we can keep making more food. Am I getting two cans of soup every time? Why do I have three now? Huh. Weird. Okay, well, you're hungry, so you can have some. You're hungry, so you can have some. Uh, I'll give some to you as well. I don't like Tom. He can stay hungry. Pay attention, Captain. Since this is a doozy, we're approaching a celestial body that appears to be a planet. I don't like appears to be a planet. Makes me think it's not a planet, it's just a planet-sized thing that we shouldn't be screwing with. My scanners detect no life, but some structures on the surface suggest that it was inhabited at one point. The climate is harsh and unwelcoming, but even that beats being stranded in space, right? A landing can be attempted, but setting the coordinates will require some pretty complicated calculations. Since you're not exactly a rocket scientist, what do we have Emmett for? What do you mean? You will need luck on your side to succeed. Bearing that in mind, should I initiate the landing protocol? Hell yeah, you should. Emmett, can you remember to carry the one and all that stuff? Is that where we're going? Was that giant golden planet always out our window? I haven't been paying attention. Navigation system and spacesuit are still unavailable, so I'm not sure how I feel about this, but maybe that's how it becomes available. I'm also making more soup, and I've got everybody fed, and we're off to the races. Please be a planet and not something angry. Oh. Okay. Day 13. Things just... Oh my god. Mootopia. What? Great job, Captain! While the landing was rough, you managed to sit the shuttle down with minimal losses. Everything appears to be in order, aside from some damage to the communication console. And my shovel. I needed that shovel. I, I need to dig up minerals for crafting. I need to bury poop. Bludgeon people who want a mutiny. I believe it's not beyond saving, although it will take a while to calculate the optimal way of conducting the repairs. Please remain patient, Captain. For now, take a moment to take in your surroundings. Who knows, perhaps this place will turn out to be a good kind of mootopia. Wait, did I just moo? What a weird glitch. I mean, utopia, obviously. Crafting complete- Oh, I don't like this place. Does Tom look a little bit crazy? and skinny to you guys. Okay, I think he might need a little bit of food. He's starving. Okay, well, I'll give it up. You can have some food. I can see how the communication console kind of got jacked up. Um, should we keep crafting food? I feel like that's really important. Thank God this thing didn't break. Other than that, uh, welcome to Mootopia. You know what? I think that's going to be it for this episode of 60 Parsecs, guys. I feel like this is a good place to leave off. It was a good introduction to the game. If you guys want to see me continue, as always, be sure to leave a like on the video. Let me know. I would love to make this a series like I did with 60 Seconds. And now that we're on Mootopia, I get the feeling we're going to have to put a whole lot more faith into our little magical artifact. Thank God I took that thing. But thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.